Sarah, you are angled closer, oh, so your head appears mm -hmm. larger. But when we were at your house, it was angled to me, and it made my already large head appear, like, mm. abnormally large. Hey guys, welcome back to Donica and Shelby Reads. I'm Donica. I'm Shelby. And today we are doing a super highly anticipated book talk mm -hmm. between us two. Yeah, it was highly anticipated <laughs> by us. And this is a, a number one New York Times bestseller. It was on Reese's Book Club. This has been like the number one bestselling book for like two years or something. Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. 20, un, this is unscripted, 20 seconds, we're gonna try and do our brief summary to make this more fun, cause this is a book talk, this ain't a summary talk. 20 seconds, describe the book. I'm gonna be so, <laughs> all ready, go. Um, this is about a child who gets abandoned in a marsh and she is a feral child and she has to figure out the world around her but she also falls in love and then she also gets accused of murder. <laughs> in 10 seconds, <laughs> I could never. Local girl Kaya lives in a marsh. Her mother and father have abandoned her. She has to live on her own since a young age. She has to find all her own food, bedding, and uh, despite all of this, she finds love. Meanwhile, a man is murdered and she has been accused. Did she do it? Find out. <laughs> I like how out of all of the information that you could have included in 20 seconds, you said that she has to find her own bedding. Okay. Enjoy the video. <laughs> As a book, it was five stars across the board, mm -hmm. never been done before. But as a play, <laughs> I know, all random. <laughs> but as a song, it was horrible. Well, when we got to the end, uh -huh. the book, uh, well, the ending just made me feel sad and I wanted to give it four because I was left with a little gloomy feeling at the end. You know what? I almost feel like I had the opposite because I feel like when I just, I feel like we've had really good luck with contemporary, because mm -hmm. Ask Again Yes, Ask Again Yes, that wrapped up so nice. Not perfectly, but mm -hmm. you got a conclusion. I felt very, I had closure yet. I felt very concluded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now with this one, again, she could have very well left it at, it's up to your interpretation. Who did it? In fact, I thought it was up to my interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't understand the poem at first. I know I'm jumping ahead of myself, but yeah. I ended up giving it a five star, like four and a half, run up to five. Mm -hmm. Because one, yeah, it's overall gonna, four and a half. I, it's so hard for me to give a five star to a contemporary, which is just so hard because you know contemporaries, they wreck my soul mm -hmm. to the point where I can't give you five stars because I'm wrecked. <laughs> I, I just can't. I'm not physically able. But this one, this book was just. And the ending, I loved it because it didn't leave you guessing. It She just flat out said, although I did have issues with how, how, where did she get the wig? Where did she get the cost? Like, you know, yeah. like, was Kaya, she was so smart. We Did we even get enough to see she was fully capable of this heist? Like, I feel like I was watching um, Ocean's Eleven. Like, I feel oh. like there was a whole <laughs> Ocean's Eleven heist movie we missed out on of Kaya you know, doing all this intricate planning. Yeah. I totally believe well, the the current, the moon, she knew the moon was gonna be uh, out, she knew the current was gonna be fast, but with the whole disguise, I'm like, we're... Well, if you think about it, there was one point in the book where we were going by months and months at a time. It would mm -hmm. be like seven months later. Mm -hmm. Or like a whole year later, too, Yeah, sometimes. so yeah. we didn't get to see a lot of what she was yeah. doing. Her intelligence levels were like jumping, too. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't even realize how smart she was because we weren't seeing all the years of research and reading that she... That's all she did was read and yeah. study. I mean, so, Academic yeah. Academic textbooks. The beauty of this book is you're watching her just live her life in the marsh it, yeah. it was beautiful to me and it was exciting i but also i kind of do enjoy those types of reads like where you know there's not gonna be a ton of action you're just gonna be watching someone try to survive like i mm -hmm. love those books and so i understand why some people read it and be like dnf can't handle it but i love that was so beautiful to me yeah that it wasn't it was she somehow caught me into this book she she got all of me into this book when there wasn't a whole lot going on, really, you know? It felt like I was reading, like, a magical, immersive book. Yes. Like, I felt was. like I was in a magical place, but I was just in the marsh with her. I know. When I was re writing she my She made it magical. Yeah, you know? she did. I felt most at peace when she was in the marsh mm, alone. Like, yeah. When she was there alone or she was just at the beach alone, I felt at peace. 
When Tate was there, I felt at peace, mm-hmm. but anytime anybody else was on the beach or she was in the town, I was like, just go back to the oh market. My gosh. It was stressful for me. I'm so glad you said that because when there were parts where she was going to town and I had to put the book down because you know how, how uncomfortable I get. Yeah. So like there, I was reading, 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 and then it got to the point where I kind of skimmed ahead because I could see she was going to town. It was when she saw Chase with that other girl. <sighs> and I think I put the book down for a whole day. I didn't pick it up again because <laughs> I was like, I cannot... What is going to happen? Are they going to pick on her? And it, it wasn't, no situation was as awkward as it could have been, but enough that I had to put the book away. <laughs> because I was like, no, I can't do <laughs> that. Yeah. So, okay, well, first of all, I just want to talk about the format. I love the format because you are jumping from past to present and then they merge at the end what is it all leading to but you don't know how you got there and so i love books and tv shows that like show you what's the big uh uh-oh you know you get right at the beginning you find out chase died the whole book is just little bits of the past tiny bits of the present you know and they merge i love books like that that added a lot of tension Mm -hmm. that really drove the that was like the driving suspense of like who did this Mm -hmm. that we got to follow those two sheriffs did you? I really liked them. I did too. They weren't. And that one part where they were like, he like made a point to say, we don't need to go messing up her house. Yeah. Like they, I they was like, awesome. I was so scared. I was like, they're going to go in there and just destroy everything. And they were like, hey, just don't be going. But if they had destroyed the house, they probably would have found the damn evidence yeah. the underneath <laughs> the wood. But they were like, let's not mess up this house. And so I was like, y'all the real MVPs of this mm-hmm. book, okay? <laughs> I had just wrote down that, you know, because contemporaries, why they hurt me so much is because they're in the real world. And maybe it's not like a true story, but there was something like this, I'm sure happened or, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And so just seeing that the racism in the 50s, mm-hmm. 60s, even the 70s, I mean, we're here today and there's still racism, but flat out segregation and things against just people of color, women, it's just, ugh, it was hard to, to like see. Let's get into jumping next. But how Kaya, at the very end of the book, I'm like, literally was sobbing when jumping passed away and Mabel was like he saw you like a daughter and she was like he was my Paul oh yeah <laughs> like, so it just let me hold <laughs> it through even in this time we have to remember like being black was less than oh, but yeah. being poor equal they were equals almost you know and and despite her being poor and swamp trash she was still better than jump in in the the yeah. world's eyes. Mm-hmm. Kaya felt that she could go and she could be she could turn to jump mm-hmm. in and she could go and visit him in the segregated neighborhood. Mm-hmm. But I think that it also did a good job of showing that there's yeah that they, they were equal but they still weren't on equal playing mm-hmm. fields because even Kaya the Marsh girl mm-hmm. didn't have guys like throwing rocks at her in the street mm-hmm. you know like and. It really would have been up to Kaya at that point on whether or not she mm-hmm. wanted to befriend Jump. Mm-hmm. He would have been kind mm-hmm. to her no matter what. It w- Kaya was the one who had the privilege to say, like, exactly. Am I gonna be? Privilege. Was it Scupper? Yeah, it's not Scupper. It was Scupper, Tate's dad. Mm-hmm. When he's like, they're in the trial and he just has like this moment of just realization. And it's almost like the bubble he was in, he popped it. You know, he, he popped himself and was like, he realizes. I've been treating this girl that my son, who I trust and I love, he loves her. He's loved her. Mm-hmm. I've been treating her like she's trash. And it's like, he didn't even realize he was being prejudiced. And he's he was like one of the good men exactly. of the Exactly. And privilege and prejudice can be very sneaky things that you think you're a good person. Like, if you're not coming out of your bubble and seeing other people's issues and problems, that part made me cry when mm-hmm. Scepper realized. And he's like, I'm going to go be my son. I was like, oh. yeah, There were such great characters in this book, <gasps> such great character moments in this book. There's one thing that I was like, Okay, Chase was like the the creepy. He he always gave me weird vibes from the start, Jock. Oh, Even though yeah. he was obviously so handsome and like he was like the perfect guy of the town, he always was creepy to me. I was not expecting him to go all out at the end like that. I feel like that was crazy. Well, I kind of expected it because, and she kind of describes it too as like she kind of like was associating her dad with him and just saying how that's men like that they don't they need the last whatever like to to in this case like she's like chase needed the last punch he was obsessed with her like she can you imagine thinking someone's below you and they reject you 
Like, I think that would drive someone crazy, especially when he, like, thought he had this, like, he had, he, she was in love with him, and he had her right where he wanted, you know? Yeah. And then she's like, um, no. Like, what's really important to remember about Kaya, and I think the author described it throughout the entire book, but right here, like, Kaya only knows the world through the marsh. She only knows the world through animals. She doesn't know through people because she's never been around people. Although she is a beautiful young girl, her interactions are more animal, primal. And so I love this one part. So she's ta thinking about Tate. He's leaving her things on the stump <coughs> and she's thinking about love. And I don't think she really understands what love is completely, but she knows it through animals. So she said she had watched male birds wooing females by bringing them gifts, but she was pretty young for nesting. So she's oh, like yeah. thinking about, like it's just so cute that he, she's like, he's wooing me, but I think I'm too young for nesting. How she just described <laughs> yeah. it is so cute. She, her entire childhood and like coming into adolescence, she was just mm. so adorable. Tell, tell them the part that you texted me that made you cry. And it, was like, oh, and it, it made me cry even though it hadn't when I initially read it. <laughs> this part I'm about to tell you about, I actually was like, mm, like I actually made a noise. <laughs> we watch <laughs> little Kaya. We watch her. She's so tiny. She's only, she was actually six. She's running around, living her life, collecting shells. She's wandering around alone and she can't, she like doesn't have any way to tell time. She doesn't know how to read. So she looks up at the moon and she realizes that her mom told her every time, like what, when the when there's like a harvest moon or something like that. Whatever, something. the harvest moon or the blue moon yeah. or whatever. That's when she knows that it's her birthday because it's around the same time every year that she was born. So there she is, seven. She takes a break from digging up shells all alone. She's boiling beets at the young age of seven. She looks up at the moon and it's the it's like the harvest moon and she goes, I reckon I'm seven. <laughs> and I lost it. I like just started crying because that just that one sentence, it's like that's how the rest of her life is gonna be. I, I legitimately Yeah, crying. and so I didn't cry at that part. I don't even think I I just kinda of breezed by it. Then I had texted her. We had just kinda of met jumping in Mabel and I had told her I had threatened her and I said if anything <laughs> happens to jumping in Mabel, she's gonna get it because I will die for them. She had just told me when she had cried that one part and I started crying reading the text because I was like There were multiple times I cried in this book. And only a couple heavy cries, but I think we were very lucky that we had Kaya to follow. She might be, she's in like my top three female mm. leads that I followed so far. She was just so resilient and ever since a young age you're rooting for her. There's never a moment that I didn't root for her. Even at the end, she was raised by nature and in nature something threatens you. All she got was a shack on the marsh. That's all she asked for. And he was coming in to threaten it. I put quote gems. Her mom used to tell her unworthy boys make a lot of noise. She kind of thinks about it in terms of the animal world where the lesser males, the ones that aren't dominant, trick females into mating with them in different ways. Mm -hmm. Even towards the end when she's on trial, she's looking at some of the men and they're shiny this, they're shiny that. And then another one, oh, I love this one. Tate's asking her to forgive him for leaving her for years, which, oh, gosh. He's like, if only you could some way forgive me. And she looked at her toes and she thought, why should the injured, the still bleeding, bear the onus of forgiveness? So basically, why should the injured, the still bleeding, bear the responsibility of forgiveness? It was like, <laughs> like even after all that time, she's like thinking, I'm still hurt, I'm still bleeding. It has not even begun to scab over. So I love that. When she gave Jumpin a copy of her book, and he kept it in his window. <laughs> yeah, like that was she said, beautiful. like a proud paw. Mm -hmm. When I found out that she had done it, I went back and read about 20 or so pages. Basically from the start of everything. She never once says she didn't do it. Yeah. She never says that. And although I think she pled not guilty, she never once said I didn't do it. To her, she might not think she murdered. You know what I'm saying? To her, it might have been self-defense. Overall, this book was a great read. But I did tell Shelby that when I was like ugly crying on some of the parts, I did tell her, oh, this is why you like contemporaries. Because like I crying feels good and when you're crying about something that's not real it's like even better <laughs> yeah. i actually was left very sad at the end i love tate and kaya's relationship and he wasn't sad well i no it was sad because we didn't get to really see anything like you wanted more of i them. wanted to read more about them but mm -hmm. it just felt kind of like we figured out that they were going to be together forever i was happy and then kaya passed away <laughs> it ends off on tate and he's like crying because he misses her and like 
his life will never be the same and then he looks and then he's like kind of left with i think he's too old and he's lived a happy life with kaya he doesn't have to wrestle with why she did it she can mm. just burn the he can burn i it. think oh and we didn't really talk about like who did you think did it because to me there was only three options kaya tate or jump in I thought that it was either Chase's, like, wife or his mom. Mm. Another part of me thought that it was a suicide out of his guilt or something. Because he was also, like, didn't he would also, like, drink too much sometimes. Mm-hmm. Those I, were good. Those were I was, like, pretty much, like, give, just taking what they were giving me. And I thought, ooh, jumping did it. And then once we were learning more of the testimony, I was like, no, it was Tate. I was like, it was definitely Tate. When she's watching him and he gets taken by the sheriff... Oh, yeah. And really, it was just his dad that had passed, and they were telling him. But I was mm-hmm. like, what's happening? When I found out she was Amanda Hamilton, I went back and tapped her poems. And let me just say, when I was reading them, because I, I was like, where's the first time we saw an Amanda Hamilton poem? It was on page 153, and I didn't remember where she had seen it, but it said, Kaya recalled a poem written by a lesser-known poet, Amanda Hamilton, published in a local newspaper she'd bought at the Piggly Wiggly. Well, I was thinking the whole time the poems she was reciting were from a book her mom had. So I was like, I think Amanda Hamilton's her mom because they just all were too aligned with Kaya. Like they were too much of what she was going through and living in the marsh and just, so when it said she was Amanda Hamilton, I was like, wait, that, I mean, that's, I, well, it wasn't too unexpected, but I did think it was her mom until I went back and realized she had said, they were in a local newspaper. I was like, oh, I didn't remember that part. So that part to me was so random, almost unnecessary. I was like, okay. And I, I love how Tate was like, I used to, like, he said something basically along the lines of like the poems were dry. Why? They weren't that <laughs> good. <Yeah. laughs> and I love how, can you imagine like being in your, <laughs> in your kitchen with your husband and like your secret passion? And he's like, yeah, those Amanda Hamilton poems, I don't want you seeing them. <laughs> Trash! Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching this month's book talk. So, we do have something planned special for April. We are going to try and do three back-to-back-to-back book talks. I do want to put out just a little tiny video before we get started so I can tell you what three books we've decided on. I think two of them are going to be mine because you picked this one. So the next one's me, then you, then me. We'll, we'll put out a little video so y'all can know what books we end up deciding on. And then hopefully, back to back to back, we can do it. Whale believes in us. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps us out. And until our next video, y'all take care. Bye.